Now for a look at what the Target 12 investigators are working on. As we've been reporting, there is a $220 million proposal to breathe new life into the long vacant Superman building, which officials have said would include affordable housing units. Target 12 investigator Tim White joining us live at 4. So Tim, at the announcement this week, state leaders said about 20% of the units there would be set aside for right. affordable housing. Your team yeah. wanted to know what does that really mean? Though? Yeah, I mean, Ted Nisi and Steph Machado wanted to look into that because one person's definition of affordable may not be another's. They weren't able to get actual dollar amounts for what monthly rent would cost in those units, but they were able to get from the state commerce agency. The goal is rent to be 30% of someone's income. So they did the math and here's what that could look like. So when doing the math, someone making just over $48,000 a year, they might pay $1,211 a month. An annual income of roughly $60,000 a year would pay just over $1,500 a month. And an income of nearly $73,000 a year would pay $1,800. But look, there are still a lot of questions here. What would that rent include utilities? How about parking costs? And what kind of apartment are we talking about here? A studio, one bedroom. So Brian and Kim, obviously a lot of variables. And we know earlier this week when this was announced, we heard from a lot of state leaders who mm -hmm. were praising this deal. We heard earlier in the show from Senate President Dominic Ruggiero, who's yep. in favor of it. Another person strongly in favor, Lieutenant Governor Sabina Matos, who was your guest on Newsmakers. Well, and as you know, Kim, uh, she announced earlier this week she wants to seek a full term as Lieutenant Governor. So we had her on the show. And as you said, she is eager to see this deal happen because uh, in her former job as Providence City Council President, Matos told us she saw a lot of bad proposals with what to do with the building. And key to her is the, this idea of blocking off affordable units. We want uh, teachers to live in the city. We want uh, police officers to live in the city. We want the firefighters to live in the city. And most of them cannot afford to buy or to, or to rent in the city of Providence right now. And it's this, the same thing that happened in the city of Providence, when I go throughout the state of Rhode Island to speak to other communities, they're facing the same challenges. Absolutely, and, and Tim, another story you guys have been tracking. Yesterday we learned Ripta paid $170,000 yeah, in a wild. ransom for the hackers responsible for last summer's data breach. And that breach compromised the information of more than 17,000 state employees as we've been reporting and we've been hearing from a lot of them in the Target 12 office. And so has the Senate Oversight Committee, which has held hearings on the breach. Earlier today, our, our Sarah Grinelli met up with the chairman of that committee, Lou DePama, to get his reaction to the development. I surmised the payment was made by the insurance company. And that was it, because I believe RIFTA has, uh, has, has, hopefully still ha had, or still has, cybersecurity insurance. Had we had better protocol, we might not have had to done that. Now, Ripta told us yesterday they are taking steps to, you know, shore up their cybersecurity. We know that includes more training for their own employees as right. well. Right, that's right. it. Target 12 investigator Tim White, as always, thanks for being with us. Thank you.